My name is Walter A. Wake Jr. Uh, my rank was E3. And then we came back home in September of 67. Um, we pulled into Norfolk and uh, pulled up to Pier 12 and sitting there next to us was uh, the USS Forrestal who had just suffered the big fire uh, in July of 67. And my first impression of the ship was um, I couldn't comprehend how steel could be bent and twisted in so many odd shapes. Um, uh, the Shortly after we got back, uh, they started sending everybody to firefighting school. So I went up to Philadelphia and, and went through the school. And um, uh, myself and, and another fellow from 2nd Division on, on America, we, we got the highest two scores in the, in the class of 300 at the time. Um, came back to the ship, we uh, did a number of things while we were uh, in, in Norfolk and then in Portsmouth in the yard uh, during uh, um, uh, 19, uh, September 67 to April of 68. And um, uh, the uh, 10th of April, 1968, we pulled out for Vietnam. Um, went down to Rio. Um, from there, went across the Atlantic into the Indian Ocean. We were given a, a guided tour of the World War II battles in the Pacific. Uh, each day as we went through um, Indonesia, um, we were told about, you know, this is where a particular battle happened on such and such a date. And so we got quite a history lesson being in those locations and hearing, hearing the uh, details of what happened there. Um, pulled into, uh, into the Philippines first. We, uh, we uploaded a, a lot of uh, food, bombs, fuel, whatever, um, and then made our way to, uh, to the line. And, um, we went online uh, May 31st and um, launched aircraft right away and, and we were off and running. And during Vietnam, we were launching aircraft 12 hours a day. We were 12 on, 12 off. There were a minimum three aircraft carriers on station. Um, we were uh, Yankee Station and we were a lot further north than uh, a lot of people realized. I think we were actually closer to Haiphong harbor than we were to the DMZ or, or certainly to uh, Saigon. Um, uh, we had uh, we had a, a MiG-21 try to come out to the ship and, and create some damage once. Uh, he never got close. Um, he, uh, the the MiG-21s were a prized possession of the North Vietnamese. They didn't have that many so they popped their heads up every once in a while and, and rattled their, their swords, but they never really did much because they, they, they didn't want a chance getting into a, a dogfight and lose them, so they would pop up, create some havoc, and go back down. Um, we never saw it, but we heard about it after the fact. Um, so for us, Vietnam was, was basically a, a, a long, busy work day, and the, the days could be um, uh, 16, 18 hours long. Um, and during that work day, you were um, uh, standing watches. So, um, you know, you might you go to work at 8 in the morning and um, um, work until 5 or 6 or whatever it was. You might be able to grab an hour of sleep and then you might have to go on the, on the uh, 8 to midnight watch or the midnight to 4 a.m. watch or the 4 to, 4 to 8 watch. Um, so your day was kind of chopped up and, and long. Um, my watches on both cruises were um, uh, lookout watches up on the top of the island or on the fantail. Uh, and during uh, underway replenishments, my job was to maintain the distance line. So I would hold this line on the flight deck. It was tied to the supply ship about 110 feet away. And there were flags on the line that indicated the distance so that the quartermasters at the helm were uh, able to keep the two ships at the same distance for the whole thing. Um, and uh, my other watch that I stood was bridge watches. Um, the first time I went up there, 
they assigned people to different positions and I was the last person left and um, the, the bosun mate of the watch said, come on with me, we're going to put you on the helm. And I said, excuse me, I have no idea what I'm doing. They said, well, it's okay, you'll be right. And I remember taking, putting, putting my hands on the wheel and this big four foot wheel with a brass ring around the outside and I'm holding this thing and, and I'm thinking, please don't let there be a turn for the next four hours because I have no idea how to do this. Um, so here I am 20 years old driving the newest aircraft carrier in, in the Navy and probably one of, if not the, the biggest ship on the water at the time. Um, and um, somewhere during the watch, they called for a, a right turn. And um, this quartermaster leaned over my shoulder and said to me, two degrees at a time. And I turned the wheel right two degrees and stopped, two degrees and stopped, two degrees and stopped. And this went on for what seemed like a very long time and nothing happened. And um, all of a sudden the bow took off to the right and it just went. And I thought, oh my God, how am I gonna stop this thing? And the same quartermaster leaned over my shoulder and said, when you get halfway through the turn, two degrees back, two degrees back, two degrees back. And I did that, and I brought the ship out on the new course without any corrections at the, at the end, which is what they're looking for. So it impressed somebody. So from that point on, my, all my bridge watches were nothing, were, were on the helm. I did nothing else. Um, so um, as a result of that, I now have a, a bumper sticker on the back of the car that says, uh, once you've driven an aircraft carrier, anything else is a subcompact. Um, but that was, that was exciting. That was, that was great. Um, so we did our time in, in Vietnam. Um, our skipper had left in the middle of the cruise and got permission for us to do a certain navigation. So um, when we were finished our tour there after visiting um, Philippines, Subic, um, Yokosuka, Japan, Hong Kong, we then went to um, Sydney and Wellington, New Zealand. And from there we went across the Pacific. And when, as we approached uh, Cape Horn uh, at the bottom of South America, we encountered 60-foot seas for about three days. And uh, it was the only time I've ever seen an aircraft carrier do a destroyer impersonation. She was bouncing and bobbing all over the place. A lot of people got sick. Um, but we came around the, around the Horn and, and uh, up the east coast of South America, went back to Rio. And then from Rio pulled into um, Norfolk on December 15th, 1968. Um, December 16th, I'm sorry. And um, it was literally four, four years to the day that I enlisted. Um, and during the Vietnam cruise, uh, government, the Congress had passed a bill bringing 50,000 reservists back to the states uh, immediately, unless you had your uh, on duty in Vietnam, you had to finish your tour. So it was the beginning of the cutbacks and the reduction of the numbers in Vietnam in late 68. And I was caught up in that and so as a result I was separated from active duty uh, upon arrival in uh, December of 68.